topics that's going to be covered on the four main boards on the day will be a system overview and outlining the system and the profitability of the system. We will be looking, say, at grassland management and the total tonnage of grass grown over the last number of years and also the finishing performance of the cattle and the winter finishing strategy. Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, I'm joined by Donald Fahey, Chagas technician to Newford Farm, to give an update on the farm and discuss the upcoming open day on Tuesday the 23rd of May from 2 to 6pm. Donald, you're very welcome. A busy breeding season on the farm at the moment. How's it all going? Yeah, it has been a a busy breeding uh, season so far. So our our pre-breeding heat checks began on the 3rd of April. Um, This was just where we uh, tail painted all the cows and uh, just started recording on notepads um, what cows were showing signs of heat. AI began on the 24th of April and will continue for 10 weeks, so up until the 4th of July. I suppose we've three weeks breeding completed since the 15th of May. And I suppose just to summarise the performance, um, 78 out of 79 cows have been inseminated. The 25 out of 25 out of 25 heifers have been inseminated, and we have four repeats so far. What heat detection aids are you using on the farm to get those kind of figures? So uh, the cows are tail painted, uh, and the tail paint is topped up weekly. Um, we have a vasectomized bull running with each group of animals and that bull is fitted with a chin ball and also a moo heat collar. Um, so the moo heat collar, I suppose, just sends a, a text message to us and lets us know that the vasectomized bull had been in contact say, with, with an animal showing signs of heat. And then when we go out to the field, we see that that animal as well is, is covered in the, in the paint, in red paint, say, from the chin ball. So we know that that animal was definitely showing signs of heat uh, earlier on in the day. And what size are you using on the cows and then on the replacement heifers? Yeah, so I suppose we have a strict enough selection criteria when it comes to choosing our sires. Um, so, for example, at uh, mature cows, they're mated with sires that have less than uh, 8% calving difficulty and 5.8% uh, calving difficulty is used on our younger cows. And both of them figures have to have 70% reliability. Um, obviously, look, we're, we're chasing carcass weight, so our mature cows, they're mated with sires, say, with a 35 kilo uh, PTA carcass weight, and likewise, our younger cows are mated with sires, say, with a, with a, with a 25 kilo carcass uh, PTA. And both, I suppose, there's a minimum of 1.86 uh, for a confirmation score. Our first calvers then, um, they're mated, say, with, with a sire, uh, LM2014. Edendale Iver, he's less than 6% calving difficulty. Um, he's greater than his 25 uh, kilos predicted carcass weight. So I suppose Edendale Iver, LM2014 is used on our heifers. And then, say, on our younger cows, we're using Gardner Nelson, which is LM4851, which is a limousine cow. We're using Lapan which is a Shirley, so his code is CH4321. And then we have Birch Park Rufus, which is another limousine sire, and his code is LM7713. Then on a mature cow, say, we're using four sires. So we have G-STAD, which is a limousine, so LM4366 is his code. We have a Shirley bull there called Whitecliff, Orwell, uh, his code is CH6271. We're using Gagan Power as well, which is a limousine bull, so LM7404. And then our last bull that we're using is another Shirley bull, uh, Grangewood Royal Oak, so CH8262. Um, so they're just a, a breakdown of what sires we are using. And you're using once a day AI, Donald. How is that working? Yeah, so once a day AI has been completed for the last number of years in the farm and it has worked very well. Um, just to be honest with you, from a labour point of view, so there's, there's one labour unit on the farm and uh, 
just the once a day AI rule has worked very well and we're getting exceptional results from it, I suppose, how it works. So any cow, say, or heifer that's uh, shown signs of heat uh, is inseminated each day at 12 noon. And say if that same animal is still expressing signs of heat later on in the evening or say the following morning, it receives a second straw. Um, so it's inseminated again at 12 noon the following day. Um, this practice has, work, has worked very well. And I suppose if we look at the, the 2022 scanning results, um, so 54 cows held to the first service, 13 cows held to the second service, and then just one cow held to the third service. And if we look at our yearling heifers, say when they were bull last year, um, 13 held to the first service, seven held again to the second service, and one heifer held to the to the third service. Um, so definitely the once a day AI rule is uh, is working very well on, on Newford Farm. That's great, Donald. Really great figures. It has been a difficult spring getting grazing carried out on the farm. How are grazing conditions on the farm at the moment? Yeah, definitely. I suppose like every farm, it was a, a very challenging spring. Um, I suppose in Newford, we availed of the of the good weather and good ground conditions when we when we got the chance there. Say back in in uh, towards the back end of Mar or back end of January, right up until the beginning of March. So our yearling beef heifers, they were turned out to grass on the 26th of January. And um, now look, they had to be rehoused again for for um, two weeks uh, during the bad weather in March. But look, cows and calves were turned out the, the 7th of February. Now they had to be rehoused again um, in March again because of bad weather. But I suppose really it's about taking the opportunity when, when you have when you have the chance and to to get animals out to grass early, and especially from um a, a, well I suppose especially on a on a suckler farm, um it certainly helped to reduce the 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 pressure on the sheds because we have such a, a tight compact calving season, um getting cows and calves out to grass earlier resulted in healthier calves. And at least when they came back in, they had strengthened up an awful lot. They had a better immune system and we had no sickness when we came back in. But I suppose even the fact that we could get the, the yearling beef heifers out on the 26th of January, it helped to condition the swards um, for the year ahead. So the, it removed that early graze and it helped to remove any any dead material that, that grew over the winter months. And at least it conditioned the swards. So... When the when the cattle or when them heifers went back out to march, they went back out to to green, healthy pastures, and uh, it certainly gave us a we had a better response too from our fertilizer, um, because we had a, a very high leaf content in the sward. And what has the plan been for fertilizer so far this year? Yeah, because I suppose ground conditions were very tricky, and because we have uh, such a high demand again because of. Uh, a very tight compact calving season and a, say a six week calving rate there of 90%. Um, we have big demand there in the spring. So look, our 40 units of protected urea was spread by the 1st of April and we're fall and then say we're following then following say with uh, 20 units of protected urea after each graze and for the month of April. But I suppose since 2021, um, there has been a big emphasis on oversown clover on the farm. So 26 hectares have been have been oversown with white clover. And the nitrogen application, say, on these paddocks then will be stopped for the summer and we'll let the clover go and fix the atmospheric nitrogen. So it'll help to reduce our fertilizer bill and also help the farm to become more sustainable. And you mentioned there how the yearlings were let out there in the end of January. How have they performed over the winter and how are they being managed at the moment and over the coming season at grass? Yeah, so I suppose they had a, a relatively short winter period when, when we look at it. Um, say the, the 2020 born male calves, um, they were housed on the 26th of November and they were three, 390 kilos. They were offered a kilo and a half of 18% crude protein concentrate uh, per day, and they also received ad lib silage of 75 DMD. 
They had an average daily gain, say, just shy of our target of 0.6 kilos per day for the first winter. Um, but because weather conditions were so good, we decided to, to, to pull back on, on the meal and to remove it from the diet, say, in early February, thinking that we could get out to grass. But then ground and weather conditions deteriorated rapidly. So we decided then not to reintroduce the meal. Um, but they were still being offered the ad lib uh, 75 DMD silage. And that gave us an average daily gain of 0.56. If we look at the performance of the, the 2020 born heifer calves then, um, so they were housed on the 10th of December at weighing 370 kilos. Like similar to the to the steers, they were offered a kilo and a half of concentrates of 18% crude protein and ad lib uh, 75 DMD silage. And them heifers say they had an average daily gain of 0.68 uh, kilos per head per day over the winter. And they went back out to grass on the 26th of January. So they had a, a very short winter uh, period. So they did. They were only in really for, for say, uh, six weeks in total. And the open day is coming up on the 23rd of May. What's the plan for the day? What can farmers expect to see on the day? Yeah, so look, the open day is taking place on the 23rd of May from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, there'll be a, there's four main boards and there's also a number of stands and say demonstrations in, in the main yard as well. Um, I suppose the, the topics that's going to be covered on the four main boards on the day will be a system overview and outlining the system and the profitability of the system. We will be looking, say, at grassland management and the total tonnage of grass grown over the last number of years, and also the finishing performance of the cattle and the fin and the winter finishing reg um, strategy. We will be looking then at the sustainability practices, say, that's been implemented on the farm and how we're going to continue to reduce our carbon footprint on Newford Farm, and finally then. The last stand will focus say, on uh, herd management, so looking at the breeding and genetics of the herd, and there'll be um, and outlining uh, the under twenty four month calve and system, which which will be which will be also be displayed on the day that we'll have a number of animals there in pens, um, so that farmers can see the t the production targets that's required to calve down heifers at 24 months and i suppose really to hi highlight that it doesn't limit the the mature um body weight of the animals say um so we'll also have say for example fifth and sixth calvers there on display as well on the day um just to highlight that and then from that then signpost program they will be just discussing the benefits say of oversown clover uh, and the best I suppose, establishment methods and practices and what's involved. Grass Tin will also be also do a, a demonstration on optimum pre-grazing covers and, and what covers say that animals should be targeted at and when you should go and decide then to, to remove um, surplus bales because covers have gone too strong for the animals. And then um, the last demonstration then Outdoor, say in the paddock, will involve say um um sown ahead, say to acre specifications. So, um, just what's involved with that, and then in indoors, then as well, in the sheds, there'll be a, a number of, I suppose, private industry companies there, um, displaying their services that they offer. We we'll have a health and safety demonstration, um, on the day, and then also there will be um. Uh, there'll be a demonstration, say, completed by Dawn Meats, our industry partner, um, demonstrating correct uh, the difference, I suppose, levels of carcass fat that's on animals. And uh, so Paul Nolan from Dawn Meats will be discussing that. And there'll be there'll be three carcasses of three different fat covers on display in fridges for the day. A great opportunity, Donald, for farmers to come and see what has been achieved in Newford for the past eight years and a lot of practical demonstrations planned for the day. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Look, I'd encourage everyone to come. Um, hopefully the weather will be good. I know because it had been such a bad spring, it had been such a, a challenging spring, there's a lot of lessons to be learned and that they will all, all be highlighted on the day and that farmers can implement hopefully on their own farms over the coming years. 
Finally, Donald, the IDE have announced that Dexcom plans to build its newest global manufacturing facility in Athenry. What impact will that have for Newford? Yeah, so that um, so Chagas welcomes, I suppose, the positive annou- announcement for Athenry and for the west of Ireland. But say in light of the recent announcement, um, Chagas will enter discussions with the IDA on the transition process for the land lease, and in particular, I suppose, the anticipated time frame. So look at the minute there, um, Newford Suckler Farm is continuing on as normal. Um, to be honest with you and say that we'll be in discussions with our partners, Dawn Meats, as well o- over the future plans of the project. Um, but look, in the meantime, the herd has been continued to be managed as normal. And um, look, all focus now is placed on the open date uh, taking place on the 23rd of May. And as we said, look, it's a great opportunity for farmers uh, to, re- to review the progress of the demonstration heard over the last number of years. I'm sure farmers are looking forward to visiting Euford Donal on the 23rd of May from 2 to 6 pm. Thanks very much. Thanks, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode, and my thanks to Donald for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie, or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.